Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. And what I'd like to do today is talk about something a little different, and that is uh, a concept of a pharmacokinetics. And uh, pharmacokinetics is basically, or essentially, it's the study of uh, pharmacology, or particularly particular part of pharmacology, um, that involves how a medication or drug uh, moves through the body. Um, and that's actually literally what pharmacokinetics means. Kinetic, kinetic uh, is a movement or kinesis, and pharmaco is a pharmacology. And so an easy way of remembering pharmacokinetics is what the body does to a drug. And, and in particular, the, the classical or traditional uh, phases of pharmacokinetics um, start at uh, absorption, where uh, the medication is, is first liberated, um, from whatever form it's in, uh, typically solid, and it's somehow liberated, and then it's absorbed uh, into our body. Um, and it can be absorbed through various routes, and um, it can be uh, liberated in, in many different ways, uh, oftentimes in the form of a, taken enterally, or um, through the mouth, and then it's absorbed, it's disintegrated, it's uh, liberated through the gastrointestinal tract, absorbs through the gastrointestinal membranes. Uh, it's then uh, circulated uh, through the liver. Um, it's metabolized through the liver through what's known as a first pass effect. If it, uh, hepatic metabolism occurs with ingestion, and then it goes out to the uh, systemic areas of the body. Um, that's known as absorption. And then there's distribution where the medication is distributed throughout the body to where it needs to go or maybe where it doesn't need to go, depending on the situation. And then there's something called metabolism that's basically um, involves the, uh, the CYP, uh, cytochrome P450 um, enzyme system. Um, so there's absorption, there's distribution. That's supposed to be a D, so just bear with me. Um, Absorption, distribution, uh, we talked about metabolism. We can either um, uh, anab uh, go through what's called anabolism, where I'm building things, and catabolism, where I'm breaking things down. And depending on um, what's happening to a medication, I could be doing uh, one or more things through different chemical reactions like hydrolysis, oxidation, um, reduction, and so on. And then there is uh, the final process of, boy, that's looking particularly horrible today, uh, of elimination, E, um, where I get rid of a medication, and you typically will get rid of a medication uh, through renal clearance. So what I want to talk about today is a particular component, uh, and it, it, it really um, applies more to... Um, the distribution. And it is something called the volume of distribution or the V D. And um, it's actually its its actual name is the apparent volume of distribution. So I'll put an A there. Let's make that a little smaller here. The apparent A V D. It's the apparent volume of distribution. Um, it's often, you'll see it in some interesting units, and the units you'll see are in liters per kilogram of body weight. So the apparent volume of distribution is a really interesting concept, and I actually have struggled um, with kind of developing some sort of intuition. First of all, it is a it is not a real thing. This is not really occurring. It's just a way of looking at how a medication is distributed through the body, um, and it is a model that we can use. So it's not like it, this is really happening. That's the first thing. But what I want you to do first is I want you to imagine that I have a jug here, or a canister, or what have you. And that canister is full of water. Okay, the canister is full of water. And let's just say that I have one liter of water. One liter of water. And let's just say that I happen to add um, some sort of uh, solute to that water. The water is a solvent. 
And let's just say that I add, oh, I don't know, 1,000 milligrams of something that will dissolve in water, okay? So I had 1,000 milligrams in there. And I want you to imagine what's going to happen. Well, what's going to happen is, you know, I'm going to add it in here, and it's going to be fairly concentrated um, where I add that substance. And that substance then through a diffusion is going to want to diffuse out and distribute itself pretty much equally throughout this solution of water, okay? Um, that's just diffusion there. That's just simple diffusion. It's the movement of solute from high concentration to low concentration. And then uh, once this gets to sort of an equilibrium where it's well distributed out, I should take a sample of that water and um, if I have a thousand milligrams equally distributed in one liter, well then let's just take a little sample. Let's say that I take a one one thousandth of that liter or one uh, milliliter. Let's just take, say, take a one milliliter sample of this solution here. What, well, what should I find if I look at the concentration of this substance? Well, if I have a thousand milligrams equally distributed in one liter, then that should mean that on the average I should have one milligram, okay, uh, one milligram in every milliliter, one milligram per milliliter, right? because there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter, and I put 1,000 milligrams in a liter, so on the average I should have approximately one milligram per milliliter dissolved in this, this bucket here, okay? Um, now let's go and let's pretend that this, this is not a bucket of water, but let's just pretend that we're dealing with a human being. Oh, what is a human being? Well, a human being is nothing more is nothing more than a big bag of water uh, with some um, other elements and substances mixed in there for for good effect. But you know, fundamentally, a human being. Um, I'm not probably going to draw a very good human being here. Um, but if you can imagine that I have a human being here, okay, there we go, well, that's not terrible, okay, well, I should, have, should not have said anything, okay, so here I have my human being. My human being is essentially a big bag of water, and if we look at the human being as kind of a big bag of water with all this chemistry going on, then it might be it might be kind of easy to think that if I add um, a substance like a medication in, in one part of the human being, the tendency is going to be for that substance to diffuse out throughout, um, to diffuse out equally throughout all of the of the water in the body, if you will. Okay, it wants to dissolve, wants to diffuse out equally. And um, as a general rule, we, we generally say that in the average human person, you're going to have about 40 liters, okay? So if, in, in theory at least, um, if I add 1,000 milligrams of this substance to this person here, and let's assume that the bioavailability is 100%, so I'm, maybe I'm giving it intravenously, and um, common sense uh, would dictate that if I added 1,000 milligrams, um, 1,000 milligrams, um, that 1,000 milligrams should distribute itself out more or less equally among the 40 liters of, of body water that we have. Um, but what prevents that model from being true? Well, what prevents the model from being true from this, this, this medication distributing itself out equally among uh, the human, about the human body, is, is the fact that that water is, is not in one large compartment. That, that water is divided um, into several compartments uh, within the, the human being. So um, let's just kind of see. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to draw some other uh, compartments for you guys here. 
uh, just to show you what's going on. So, and hopefully at some point I'm looking at a bamboo touch or something on the lines of that so I can be a bit more efficient um, with my artwork. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So the body, this 40 liters, is actually divided among several compartments. So here I have one compartment, um, and then that compartment is perhaps attached to another compartment here. Um, you have to use your imagination, and there's another compartment here, and some another compartment here. So let's say that this compartment here is the intravascular space. Okay, this is within our vessels. Um, uh, the vascular space. Um, so this is really the blood plasma. Okay, so here we go. Blood plasma. Okay, um, and let's say that this this large space over here is the intracellular space, okay? We know that most of our fluid is within the cells, so... Okay, cellular space. Um, so I have my vascular compartment, my intracellular compartment. Let's just say that this is my fatty compartment here. Uh, my fatty compartment. You know, I have lots of fatty tissue. And then maybe um, I've got some other compartments over here. Um, you know, I have a cerebral spinal fluid, CSF. Um, I have joints. Um, uh, I have the peritoneal intra-abdominal space, the, um, the uh, anterior and posterior compartments, the vitreous in the eyes and the interest, uh, the, the interstitial space, and all that, all that stuff kind of, kind of will fall into this, this, this compartment here. Now let's imagine that I have an IV um, placed in my patient here. Okay, so this is my angiocatheter of my IV. It's sticking in the vessel, and out of that IV um, is medication that's being deposited into the um, vascular, the intravascular compartment here. All right. Um, now each compartment has um, different molecules, bind, uh, different molecules that certain medications may want to bind with. Um, in the vascular compartment, that's generally uh, going to be a protein. Um, the the most common protein that we run into is albumin. Okay. Now. If that medication is either um, charged or highly polar, it's going to want to, that's, that's supposed to be albumin there, down there. So if the, 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 the particle is really charged um, or polar, it's going to want to stay in the vascular compartment, right? Um, it's going to want to stay in the, the vascular compartment. It won't really want to leave that compartment because it's going to either associate itself with the water in that compartment um, or uh, perhaps maybe it's highly protein bound to these these blood proteins, these albumins. Um, so if in that situation, if I give that medication, um, instead of wanting to diffuse out into all these other uh, compartments here, uh, perhaps maybe that medication will want to stay within the vascular compartment. And the vascular compartment is just one part of that 40 liters. So when I come back and I check the concentration of that that drug, well, the drug hasn't really had a hasn't really diffused out into these other compartments. Um, so it when I check the concentration in the plasma, it, it appears to be highly concentrated um, when compared to the total amount of water in the body. And let's say that that medication is maybe um, Coumadin or warfarin. Um, Obviously, that's not something you know, give IV, but I'm just giving you that example because I happen to know its um, apparent volume of distribution. And its apparent volume of distribution is um, 5 uh, liters per kilogram. So what this means is that it's, um, when we say that it has 5 liters per kilogram, what we really mean is that um, that medication 
it, it appears as though it has only been diluted in five liters of fluid. Um, even though we know the whole body contains 40, um, it's only really diluted or, or dissolved, maybe would be a better word, in that five liters. And that tells us that it's just, it's really staying within that vascular compartment. It doesn't really want to go anywhere. It's, it, you know, it's bound to maybe the proteins, albumin, or, you know, it's highly polar charged. And it's kind of, it wants to stay within the vascular um, compartment. And now let's say that I happen to give um, a medication that is not charged. Maybe it's, it's, it's very nonpolar. It's, maybe it's, is highly hydrophobic. Maybe it's something like, um, I don't know, propofol. I don't know what the volume of distribution, apparent volume distribution of propofol is, but um, let's just say I give a medication like that. Well, that medication is, is instead of staying in the vascular compartment, it's going to want to kind of be sequestered um, within um, the fatty compartment, we'll say, of the body here. Okay, so here it is here. And maybe there's a little bit of it that stays within the vascular compartment, a little bit here, and maybe a little bit here. Okay, so now what happens is I come back and I measure the concentration in the plasma, because I can draw you know, from the plasma. And when I do that, the concentration I get is really, really dilute. In fact, maybe it looks like, again, I'm just going to make this up, Maybe it looks like it is so diluted that if I was just going off the vascular um, compartment, it, it looks like that um, propofol that I gave was maybe, um, I'm just making this up again, maybe it looks like I've actually diluted it in 10,000 um, liters per kilogram of body weight. Okay. Um, now, we know that there aren't 10,000 liters of fluid in the body, but what, what has happened is that all the medication has kind of sequestered itself within one of these other compartments, and it looks like it has been diluted out among... It, 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 basically, if you could imagine that instead of it going in the fatty compartment, that the um, vascular compartment has, is, is expanded to 10,000 liters, and, and that's the concentration we're getting. Um, now, when we say that a medication has this high of a volume distribution, we don't literally mean that it is dissolved in 10,000 liters. What we mean is it looks as though it is dissolved in 10,000 liters, but in fact, um, we know that it has been highly concentrated or sequestered in another compartment. Um, so here I have a very high volume of distribution, which, which tells me that that medication is not staying within the, the, the vascular compartment, and a very low volume of distribution tells us that that medication wants to stay within um, a, a certain compartment, not other than the vascular compartment of the plasma. And then if I have something, you know, medication that's, say, around 30 to 40 liters per kilogram, um, something like ethanol, um, ETOH, ethanol, we know that as uh, the drinking alcohol, um, which has a volume distribution of somewhere around 30 to 40 liters um, per kilogram. And in, in, in any time I get into a situation like that, where that number is close to the total body water, then that, that really means that that medication is pretty much distributed evenly throughout all of the, um, the, the body um, water, the, the 30 to the 40 liters of body water. So, okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Hopefully, that makes um, sense, and, and hopefully, you found that to be a, a somewhat of an intuitive uh, description or explanation of what's going on. Okay, as always, thanks for hanging in there.